Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about planes and axes. So you might have learned about planes, hopefully, in your anatomy course. Um, but we're going to review it here anyways and talk about axes, which may be a little bit of a new concept. Um, so we have our three cardinal planes. There's the sagittal plane in the picture that's in red. Uh, it's the one that divides you right down the center into equal, well, mid-sagittal would be equal, but it divides you into left and right portions, equal or not. Um, the coronal plane that's in that bluish kind of purple color, uh, that's going right down through the crown like this. It's also called the frontal plane. I don't care which terms you use. Um, I will use both terms, so make sure you know both of them. Uh, so coronal divides you into anterior and posterior sections. And then transverse, also referred to as the horizontal plane. Again, I'll use both, so just make sure you know both terms, but I don't care which ones you use. Uh, that goes in this direction and divides you into superior and inferior portions. Any plane uh, that you know, bisects you in any other direction would be an oblique plane. So anything that is not one of our three cardinal planes is oblique. Now we can describe our motion based on uh, what plane that we're moving in. Um, so if I'm moving completely in the frontward direction, like if I'm walking or running or riding a bike or something like that, that would be sagittal movement because I'm moving along the sagittal plane. Uh, if I got up and did jumping jacks, I'd be moving in the frontal or coronal plane. Uh, any kind of twisting or rotation, that movement is happening in the transverse plane or the horizontal plane. Okay, so we describe our motion based on the plane that we're moving in. Uh, so the plane that we're moving along. Like if you think, um, like if you had a rag in your hand and you're gonna clean the plane, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But if I put my hands out and went like this, the plane that I'm sort of cleaning with my hand is the plane that I'm moving along. And likewise, sagittal, frontal, horizontal, and then anything in between there would be oblique. Um, so if we're moving in only one plane, that would be a uniplanar motion. Uh, so like if I'm strictly moving in the sagittal plane, that is uniplanar. Uh, but more often, we're moving in more than one plane simultaneously, and we would call that multiplanar. Um, so, like, let's say I'm walking forward across the room. Primarily, that's sagittal movement. Okay, so the movement of my whole body across the room is sagittal, but each individual joint in each limb um, might have a different amount of rotation going on or a little bit of um, frontal plane movement, a little bit of horizontal plane movement. Um, so there could be a little bit of, of some other kind of um, planar movement happening, even if the majority of me is moving in the frontal or in the forward direction along the sagittal plane. Um, so I hope that makes sense. And we're going to get into that throughout this entire course. This is just sort of day one of talking about planar motion. Um, but there will be many, many more opportunities to talk about this. Okay, axes of rotation. So when we move along a plane, my limbs are rotating around an axis. Okay, so right here, I'm just extending and flexing my elbow. That's happening in the sagittal plane, and I'm rotating around this axis. So to think about the axes, you could think about there being like a hinge there where that movement is happening and where the peg of the hinge goes through the, the, the motion, goes through the hinge, that is my axis. So my finger, where I'm pointing to my elbow, my finger is the axis of rotation. That is representing where that line is. That is the axis of rotation. Now let's say I add and abduct my shoulder. I'm moving in the frontal plane or the coronal plane, and the axis of rotation is going straight back like this. If there's a hinge there, the peg of the hinge would be going straight into my shoulder, straight back. So just like we named the planes, we named the axes. So the mediolateral axis is the one that goes in the mediolateral direction. 
Um, and a Cartesian coordinate system, that would be the x-axis. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Okay, so the medial lateral axis is the one going in the medial lateral direction. Um, so that axis, the right side, anatomical right, so the person's right, is the positive direction. And the other side, the left, is the negative direction. Um, so I just showed my right and left. I don't know if the camera picked that up in a confusing way because I know it flips us all around. But um, just remember, in anatomy, whenever we talk about left and right, it's the person that we're describing is left and right. And so the same goes here. So if we're describing my positive and negative direction, my right is positive, my left is negative. Okay, the antero-posterior axis is exactly what it sounds like. It's the axis going from in the anterior-posterior direction. So it's going straight through the body, coming out towards you. <laughs> um, in the Cartesian coordinate system, that would be the z-axis. And anterior direction is positive, posterior direction is negative. Superior inferior axis, that's our last one. That's the y axis going straight up and down, right through the top of the body, even in the superior inferior direction. Uh, y axis in the Cartesian coordinate system, and superior is positive, inferior is negative. And then an oblique axis would just be all any axis of rotation that happens outside of our three um, cardinal axes. Okay, so let's see, I'll go through a couple examples here. Um, so if we go back to my add and abduction of the glenohumeral joint, my ball and socket shoulder joint, the axis of rotation is this one sticking straight out. Okay, so that is the anterior posterior axis. So if I asked a question like, around what axis does abduction of the glenohumeral joint take place in? the answer would be the anterior-posterior axis. Okay, so you'll see examples like that on homework assignments, quizzes, exams, that'll come up frequently. Okay, so this is part of being able to describe our motion, the motion of our bodies. So uh, we need to be able to describe the plane we're moving in. So that'd be frontal or coronal plane and the axis of rotation, anterior-posterior axis. Um, any kind of um like rotation like this any frontal or sorry horizontal plane uh transverse plane motion the axis of rotation is going through the top of my head right it's going up and down this direction so that'd be the superior inferior axis would be when it's going straight up and down and the rotation is happening on the horizontal plane um ba, ba, ba. oh yeah flexion extension so sagittal movement axis is going this way that's the medial lateral axis okay so that is always the case as long as our other joints are in anatomical position okay so if i'm in anatomical position i'm standing up straight my palms are facing forward and i do flexion and extension that flexion extension is happening in the sagittal plane around the medial lateral axis, okay? But now let's say my glenohumeral joints are abducted. Okay, so my arms are out to the side and now I flex and extend my elbows. That's no longer sagittal plane motion and that's no longer medial lateral axis. Okay, now that flexion and extension is happening in the frontal plane and it's happening around the anterior posterior axis just like my ad and abduction was happening. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, we'll talk about this lots more. Let me know if you have questions when we uh, see each other virtually or in class. Okay, bye.